This is a very unusual tube. It's what I call the M tube and it's made of clear glass and it's got a fill that is composed of neon gas but with mercury in it as well. Now normally neon tubes are either just purely the neon gas which makes a clear tube light bright red or it's a uh, either neon and mercury, or argon and mercury, or a mixture of both, but with mercury. The mercury vapour is the important bit, and the mercury vapour gives off a lot of ultraviolet light, and it gives off some visible light. Not much visible light, which is why this tube isn't very bright. However, what they normally do is they coat the inside of the tube with phosphor. The mercury vapour inside the ultraviolet wavelength stimulate phosphor, and it makes for bright neon tubes, and fluorescent tubes. In this case, neon. What's unusual about this one is that I'm running on DC and it's I got a neon gas fill with a droplet of mercury. You can see little beads of mercury and a little bit of staining as well. But it's also got this little dip here. The dip is why I call it the M tube. It's got that little sort of M bit at the top. And that is designed to trap the mercury because when you run a tube in DC, the mercury gradually migrates from the positive electrode over to the negative electrode. It's very slow. I'd like to have shown you this much further up the orange tongue here, but I can't because uh, it takes a while. Even when you've had it off for a while, the mercury vapour settles back down and it happens at an absolutely microscopic level that it just gradually migrates up. I also have to be careful not to bump it. There's tiny little beads of mercury here. If one of those finds its way down, the red will disappear and it will just go into a, a completely blue tube. But when, when it's been up for a while, it does go completely red at this side and then transitions with this little tongue into blue at the other side and that is because it's basically separating the mercury out in the tube with DC, uh, I suppose, in a way, migration uh, of the mercury. Now, I could give you a big long story about this, how it came about making one of these in the first place, but I'm going to put that down in the description because you guys want to see the circuitry and that's exactly what we're going to do. So, I'm going to carefully tilt this back because it does operate at 240 volts, which is bumped up rapidly to a much higher voltage, and I'm going to show you what's going on in here. Um, I may have to focus down onto here. I shall focus down onto here. What we have in here is a voltage multiplier, and that converts the 240 volts coming on here into a fairly beefy supply based on a couple of electrolytic capacitors at the bottom, but then it's got the blue capacitors behind that are for uh, multiplying that up to actually ignite the tube with high voltage. And the tube is simply in this case, the circuit board slots into this case, and uh, the tube, the electrodes just fold over and tack onto some connections at the back. So I shall show you the schematic. And I'll put this out of the way before I stick my fingers in the back of it. So here is the schematic, which is going to be horribly out of focus, but that's okay. We can fix that. I could also take the exposure off. I'm not going to take the exposure off because that will just make it go very dull very quickly. Right, I'm going to put this down carefully. I'm going to leave it on though. Precarious. Oh, oh, just balance this high voltage thing off camera. Right, tell you what, should we zoom down a bit? Let's zoom down just a little bit. This is probably swamping out horribly, but that's okay. I could tame it down, but it would... It, I just know what's going to happen. It's going to go extreme tame down then. It's going to look a bit odd. Right. I don't have a pen here. I shall use a screwdriver. Uh, I could have done with a pen. I'm going to go and grab a pen. Just give me a second. I'm going to grab that pen. Bear with me. I have a wireless microphone on. You can follow me as I run around the house looking for pens. I have found the pen. Return back to the workshop. Yeah, that makes a change. Having a microphone that can go with me asunder. So the circuitry is based on a dual voltage multiplier. The reason it's using a dual multiplier is because it's more efficient that way. And it's got one, one microfarad electrolytic capacitor at the bottom uh, and then a series of 10 nanofarad capacitors just to boost the voltage up to strike the tube. And effectively, the... Use of two electrolytic capacitors, the fact I've got a positive side and a negative side, means that this capacitor is charged up to a peak of, say, about 300 or so volts, and this one's negative 300 or so volts, so it gives about 600 volts, which is enough to sustain a short length of tubing, typically about 2 feet of 12 millimetre tubing. And the way the multiplier works, if this end goes positive and this end goes negative, current will flow through this diode and charge this capacitor up. Then... This end goes negative and this end goes positive because this is in the AC of the mains. Uh, 
And because that was already charged to about, say, 350 volts on the UK mains, this rises up to another 350 volts, and it pushes the, the current through this diode and charges this capacitor up, because this end is negative and that end is receptive to the voltage being pushed up, so that ends up with double the voltage across it. And it keeps doing that. It pushes up, adding that doubled voltage each time, so you end up with quite a high strike voltage that can break down the uh, the electrode to gas barrier. The electrode, what's the best way to describe that? A cold cathode barrier. Not really sure the best way to describe that. I've just spotted, I've got the flash on the camera, it doesn't really matter. But uh, it breaks down the uh, electrode drop and uh, strikes the tube. And the tube will then be sustained. There are two 4.7 thousand ohm resistors in series, quite high power ones. They, they don't get too hot. And the reason for those, if without them, it would just instantly try and dump all that current through the tube. And it would just make loud popping noises and flash. This limits the current, but uh, in doing so, it drops a small amount of the voltage and uh, dissipates a bit of heat. Uh, this little resistor here is 33 ohms. I just added that because it felt like you should. Um, and basically that's it. Now, this is designed to operate on roughly 240 volts. If you swap this capacitor here out for, uh, say, a one microfarad capacitor or two microfarad capacitor, but not polarised, then you can go, you can, it will multiply it up. And the original power supply this is based on did actually have the one microfarad and then it had a, a film capacitor there and it drove much, much longer lengths of tube. Because once you've uh, broken over the sort of voltage drop across the electrode, the actual drop through the gas isn't too bad. And I think it drove five or six feet. I'll say feet because instead of metres, because uh, even though I've said it's a 12 millimetre tube, just because they tend to measure uh, neon tubes in feet, because it's an old technology. But that is it. It's a very simple circuit. Um, when you initially power a tube up, a new tube with this circuit, the tube may not quite strike easily at first. It seems to take a while to get conditioned. And then if you touch the tube, it will help it strike just by capacitive coupling to ground. But it will flicker initially, but then it will gradually stabilise and then it will work. And the power consumption is very low. Things worthy of note. The positive end stays cold. The negative end, the cathode, gets hot. It's doing all the work. Um, and also the mercury migrates in that direction. It goes from the positive to the negative. So if you're actually making these tubes up, and they're likely, you know, if they're going to be in long-term use, if you mounted the tube vertically, for instance, it would make sense to have the bottom positive and the top negative, because as the mercury migrates up, it will just drop back down to the other end naturally. Um, other versions of this have been made for picture frame lights. Uh, where there was actually neon tube in pictures that used this multiplier a circuit. And they actually had a switch, a voltage selector switch that actually swapped the polarity. But they were kind of pushing these components for the, the rated design voltage in this. But that is it. How to use a capacitive multiplier to drive a short length of neon tube. I think I've featured this in the past, but it's worth featuring it again. And the unusual effects you can get... Uh, when you actually apply it to a tube with neon with the mercury in it, where the actual migration of the mercury can be seen as uh, the red neon. If this was an argon mercury tube, it would just be going pretty dark at this end. It would go a deep purpley colour, uh, but the mercury would then dominate later on. But interesting stuff. It's a very neat circuit. I've had a lot of pleasure making a lot of variations in this. I'm just trying to think. I've got another one knocking about here somewhere that I could show you, where I could show you, but I've just propped the neon on it. Just give me a second. This version, a smaller case, I'll just unwrap the cable, I actually spread the circuitry across either side of the tube uh, instead of just being up the middle, uh, and also added an extra stage just to encourage it to strike easier. But uh, read the description down below, because the story of the way I discovered this circuit is actually quite interesting um, and it's led on to many variants since but that is it uh, how to drive a neon tube or well an argon tube not pure neon it doesn't work with pure neon it tends to flash or work initially and then just not work it it needs the mercury but uh, how to drive it from just basic circuitry on a circuit board with no transformers <laughs>